this time, let's please call to order the March 23rd, 2021 regular board meeting for the Tuscaloosa City Schools. Uh, if we could have a, sh a period of silence, and we will follow that by the Pledge of Allegiance, I would ask that we all keep um, in our thoughts and prayers all the families in Colorado dealing with that tragedy. So let's have a period of silence. Good evening. Thank you for being here tonight with us. Um, at this time, board may have a motion to adopt the March 23rd regular board meeting agenda. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? That'll be approved. Item four, approve the minutes of the March 9, 2021 regular board meeting. May have a motion to approve. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Anybody opposed? Those will be approved. Item five, celebrate the arts presentation, celebrating student success. Dr. Schultz, we've already had a brief moment to talk. We're super excited for what you have in store for us tonight, so welcome back. Thank you very much. It's great to see all of you again tonight, and thank you for uh, braving the winds outside to make it. Um, Welcome. This would be what is our 49th anniversary of the first Celebrate the Arts event. Okay, we've been calling our celebration of the arts um, annual up until about our 48th, which was last year, because as you know, last year we went dark. And speaking of dark, the pandemic has done very, very dark things to the world of the arts, um, nationwide, worldwide, statewide. Um, with New York City dark and all the Vegas shows dark, although they're starting to open again. Um, it's that kind of fear about gatherings and performances has really changed the way that we do arts and education this year. Um, it'll be seen for us the same way that uh, we'll uh, be addressing learning loss and academics. Same things happen in the arts as well. Uh, less progress because uh, it's just more difficult to get things done. But amid all this darkness, there are bright spots, and that's what we're here to talk about tonight. So while we won't have a big glitzy stage full of all kinds of performers and singing and dancing, uh, we can take a moment to really celebrate the great things that are going on with our arts and education programs in the city schools. Our students are succeeding. They're exploring their creativity. They're developing their self-expression, and they're really helping themselves uh, to be able to weather the storms this year uh, with their um, education in the arts. So uh, we do have a small slideshow that I'll pull up, and uh, we hope that next year, when we are having our 50th anniversary of Celebrate the Arts, that we can all uh, enjoy a great evening at the Bama and go big. That's the big plan. So Celebrate the Arts as a slideshow looks a little bit like this. Uh, we're going to take some time to celebrate some major student successes. We're looking at national and state awards now. Um, we started in January by having our local superintendent's art show. We'll have uh, some of our state winners here tonight. And I really want to uh, take a moment to underscore the importance of winning national awards in the arts. National recognition is what we're all striving for, but uh, it doesn't happen every day. And in the arts, when it does, you want to really take a moment to celebrate that creativity and that success and uh, the passion that the students bring to their art making. And uh, the first guest that I have with me today is named Maya Young. Maya, can you come forward? Whoops, hello. Maya won a national award from the Art and Scho or, uh, Scholastic Art and Writing Award. She's uh, one of the winners of the Silver Key in Poetry Award. So uh, Maya's going to talk to you a little, well, she's going to share her poem with you and introduce herself and tell you a little bit about it. Thank you. Thank you for having me here today. My name is Maya Young, and I'm a junior at Paul W. Bryant High School. 
And I first learned of this writing competition over the summer through my own research, but I kind of shelved it and put it away until a teacher at my school, Miss McKnight, um, contacted me about submitting some work for it. And she was really helpful in guiding me through the process and um, the application process and applying. So my poem called Girl is about my experiences in quarantine, about the loneliness and isolation that I experienced and how that really um, prevented me from engaging with the world around me and with myself. And I felt like I was kind of going through the motions. And so in this poem, I really express the desire of learning how to live again in a way that I'm able to balance at the same time the collective grief and sorrow that was occurring, but also the joy that is always there if you look for it. So this is my poem entitled Girl. I plummeted. I am a girl who thrives on routine. I detest expanses of space that seem to stretch to eternity. New journals, open calendars, the slow roll of endless road. Because they imply a certain need to sit with oneself, they are terrifying. A more intimate vulnerability emerges in the private communion with self to invite the accumulation of thoughts and ideas that hurt and shame and indict. And so I sat with myself in April and in May, in between pounding out essays and penciling equations with a dignified precision to avoid the former. Any singular grit within me was steadily siphoned away with each X feebly crossed in a calendar box. June and July were marked by the routine collection of sorrows to place carefully within the folds of my heart where they would sit reverently. I built a tiny chapel in my soul for them to rest, though they still sting around their edges to hide the soft hurt in their center. I vow to feed these inhabitants with something resembling joy. Thank you very much. I used to hear people uh, use the phrase, out of the mouth of babes uh, is where comes um, honesty and joy. Maya, thank you so much for, um, for the initiative that you showed in finding out about this award and also pursuing it and then seeking out that sponsor in your school. Um, if Ms. McKnight was here, we would want to thank her as well. So, uh, but wow, uh, blown away and we look forward to seeing your, uh, your big books on sale one of these days, all right? And, and Dr. Schultz, if I could yes, sir, really please. quickly, Maya, number one, how brilli brilliantly talented you are. Uh, for people that are not artists or writers, it's even more profound to hear. So, number one, you're so talented. Thank you for being here. But number two, just your bravery for coming here tonight and sharing that with us. Thank you so much on behalf of the entire board. So, thank you. In January, when we had our uh, superintendent's art show, we looked at the local winners selected to go to the state. My understanding is this year, um, between five and 600 works, I think across the state were submitted from school systems, um, which is quite, uh, quite a few. Uh, it is because there's that volume and there's so much talent, not just in our system, but the state, we rarely have works that are acknowledged for their greatness at the state level, um, but they do come along now and then. These two works were both awarded this year. Uh, it is rare that we receive more than one award. They both come from the same school. That's the Alberta School of Performing Arts. We had a first place winner. Uh, Trinity Spain's work is entitled Fall, and that's on the left with the uh, charcuterie board and all of the pumpkins. And then uh, Miss Roper was an honorable mention in that category for um, grades five and six, and it's in the digital arts category. Now Miss Roper, I know was planning to be here, but they did uh, email and say that they were running a little bit behind. So she may show up here in just a little bit and we'll take a moment to come back and honor her. 
Um, but I do think that this also speaks to part of the vision of the school system. The Alberta School of Performing Arts was opened in 2014, I believe, uh, and we are beginning to see the fruits of our efforts there. And uh, anyway, my hat's off to both of these students. Trinity Spain and her family declined to come in public, uh, uh, to the public venue today. So we certainly respect that, but so proud of their work. And um, the State Board of Education met the uh, Friday before spring break where they made the acknowledgement of all the winners. And uh, they was, there was a virtual slideshow that is also still available um, on the State Department, through the State Department's website. Uh, all state musicians. Um, normally, this is something that's also very big for us. Uh, again, what challenged us so greatly this year is having students work virtually, 100%, not showing up in or not uh, being in school, but then also students who were in the school doing these things. I will tell you that all of the all state groups required video auditions this year. And if you've never had to record a performance of yourself, or if you ever have recorded a performance of yourself, you know that going back and trying to get it to that level that you're comfortable sending off your best work is actually one of the hardest things. So all of these students went through that process this year to, um, to audition virtually, send in recordings of themselves playing, and we had so many students um, succeed. I'll do my best to read them. I see that the, the lettering is a little bit light for me, but we had several in Allstate Orchestra from Northridge Middle, um, all of them eighth graders but one. We had Eleanor Yang, Justin Yoon, Nathan Lee, Aiden Shin, and John Linna. We are looking forward to seeing their work when they get to high school. Um, and then we also had um, both Central and Northridge High School represented in, in our Allstate Orchestra. Jacob Riches and Bailey Lynn at Central High School, and also Ezra Kim, Joanna Kamal, Charles Gambrill, Keaton Becker, and Allison Katona um, from Northridge High School. One thing I tend to notice on these two are the upper grades, a lot of 12th graders that we're gonna be losing. But uh, congratulations to all of these students. It's a, it's a wonder uh, and a testament to their quality of work that they've submitted. The Allstate Choir, um, we had representatives this year from Paul Bryant High School and Northridge High School. We also had an Eastwood Middle School student make it. That's Alfonso Morton, the fourth. And at Bryant High School, we had Brandon Bird, Alexis Ritchie, Brooklyn Turner, and Tanisha Wilder. Um, there, what I see are three 12th graders. We will miss them, and but a ninth grader looking strong going in. Those are members of the Tuscaloosa Fine Arts Academy as well. And one thing I'd like to say about Brandon Bird is that I know that he recently auditioned virtually for scholarships at um, several colleges in theater and musical theater and was awarded a scholarship at Montevallo. And so we're very, very excited about that, but we're looking forward to hearing more about that as it comes. Did I get the high school? I think I did. Northridge High School, Allison Jackson, Tierra Prince, and Tristovia Williams. Ooh, wow. This clicker skips around. The All-State Band. Lots and lots of placements here. Only one middle schooler this year. And again, uh, more of a testament uh, in our middle school programs, I think, is where we're seeing most of the, uh, the learning loss in our performing arts, in our musical uh, production performance classes, but in the high school, still very active. Jordan Benderson from Bryant High School, Sam Wurganowski from Central High School, Sammy Hatfield at Northridge, Maddie Chrissy at Northridge, Reggie Robinson at Northridge, Ethan Cook at Northridge, Colin Murphy, Andrew Bolton, Grace Jung, Victoria Yates, Elizabeth Weber and Annabelle Weber, Patrick Pan, James Gernand, Britton Perdue, and Xander Nowell at Northridge High School. Um, quite a placement, and we are very, very excited because the Alabama Bandmasters Association has decided to provide all-state band live this year. It will be live, and it will be in Mobile. It looks like we may have found our guest. Is that Tony? Hi, Tony, welcome. We're glad you're here. Can you step up here for just a second?
And we're going to come back to your wonderful artwork. Do you remember making that artwork? Yes. You want to say hello to the school board? Just say hello. Hello. <laughs> Everybody, this is Tony Roper. Tony, tell us what grade you're in. Six. What grade do you or where do you go to school? Alberta School of Performing Arts. So do you want to, do you remember anything about this assignment? Yes. What do you remember about it? I remember that um, it's a mosaic from Thanksgiving. It was one more time. What was that? I think a mosaic from Thanksgiving. A mosaic for Thanksgiving, right? And so how did you design that? Was that, did you do that with paper and pencil or did you work on a different? It's actually digital. That's digital. So which device did you use to do that? A Chromebook. You use your Chromebook. Very, very good. Do you remember the name of the program that was used for that? Okay. It's okay if you don't. I'm just asking. Uh, how much time do you think that took you to do? About um, half of my art class. So about 15 minutes. Okay. So you did that as part of your art class? Yes, sir. Okay. Very, very good. So it was an assignment in your class? That's excellent. Well, Tony, we invited you here tonight because um, we know that you're aware, but your work was selected for an honorable mention at the state level in the state superintendent's art show, and that's something to be really, really excited about. Um, it is rare that our works that we send off get awarded, and so when it comes around, it's because it's such amazing work. So the reason we asked you to come tonight was so that we could just celebrate your creativity and your success and uh, we're just so glad that you could make it here. I know that the school board would like to say something to you, too. Is there anything else you'd like to say to them? Uh, well, thank you for picking my artwork. Absolutely. Congratulations, Tony. We're very, very proud of you. And thank you so much for showing up, Mom and Dad. I appreciate you getting her here tonight, braving the weather out there. Okay? Thank you very much. So anyway, we are getting ready to, uh, we're going to have all state band will be live. They're going to perform this in Mobile. Um, I believe at the end of April, possibly at the beginning of May. I can't remember exactly where that is, but it'll be one of the very first uh, performances that most of these students will have been involved in in over a year. So uh, we are starting, like the rest of the world, to kind of wake up and get back at it, and that's exciting stuff. So it's a great transition also to talk about one of our band programs, the Central High School Band. Um, long an institution with our school system, actually the original, but uh, when we look back at band uniforms and we put our collective heads together, we determined that it was the year 2000 that Central High School last received band uniforms. And that's why last year, uh, by your grace and with the support of our executive staff, we were able to, um, to find the money to be able to purchase some new band uniforms, and this all went down right before we closed for the pandemic. And so did the uniform factory close for the pandemic. So it was a while until they arrived. They started coming in in about December, uh, late November, right after Thanksgiving or something. But I was able to attend also the Wednesday before spring break. They did a reveal at their school in the gymnasium. And uh, it was quite a production. All of the students were out on the floor uh, wearing masks, but then playing their instruments and dancing and uh, doing all kinds of great stuff and showing off their uniforms. So I wanted to make sure that you got a chance to see a little bit about your investment. So I turn it over to the Central High School Band.
Dr. Show, before they leave, uh, listen, that brought back so many memories to me. Uh, the, the, last, the last set of uniforms that Central High School received, I was getting fitted for one. I played the bass drum in the band and was a part of that group called Taps. And it's just good to look at these two young people continuing a tradition uh, that was started not only by Mr. Watts, but by the person who was over Druid. I forgot his name, but Mr. Watts was his assistant. Mr. Thompson then became Mr. Watts. Then Mr. Reed came along. I, I bet you so he knows all these band directors. But I want y'all to know I love it, and those uniforms look great on you. Thank you, Thank you all. Drum Major Brandon and Drum Major Janelle, uh, before I turn it over to them, they're going to say a couple words. I just want to say I had the pleasure of teaching both of these young, awesome people uh, in one of my last couple years before uh, I left the teaching classroom. So yes, it's great to see them up here in a musical capability because they were in my music class. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Good afternoon. My Good name afternoon. is Brandon Walton, and I'm a senior at the Central High School in Tuscaloosa, oh, Alabama. Man. Got to put an emphasis on the V. The Central High School in Tuscaloosa, That's Alabama. Right. First and foremost, I want to thank everybody for showing out, and thank you guys so much for these new uniforms. Just like Reverend Wilson said, there weren't new uniforms since 20 years. It's been 20 years yeah. since we had new uniforms. And just like I tell my martial arts students, we all wear the same uniform because we are all on the same team. That's right. We can't have one teammate, teammate wearing a different uniform than somebody else. So once again, I'd like to thank you guys for having us wear this uniform because we are one. We're on the same team, we're in the same uniform, and I love to thank Central High School as my family band. Yeah. Go CI. Yes, sir. Hello, my name is Janelle Williams, and I am also a student at the Central High School, okay. and I am also the drum major for Central High School. I would love to thank you guys for these uh, uniforms because ever since I was a freshman, we were told that we were going to get uniforms, and we finally got them, and I'm so happy that I was able to wear them. Thank you guys again for this. Thank you. So just a couple more, um, and we will be finished. I want to put on one. <laughs> uh, just a, a little note, the drum major uniforms are in white and the uh, band member uniforms are red. Uh, they're just opposite, they're, they're done in opposite colors that way. All right, still trying to go forward, let's see. We talked about how uh, Arts and education has been a tr tradition in Tuscaloosa for coming up on nearly 100 years. Thank you so much for the last decade, which has really seen a lot of incredible expansion in our arts offerings. Thank you for your support with that. I can't ever go away without making sure we have a clear understanding of the why we do what we do. Um, a few of the things I want to uh, talk about in here, if you look at those first two, arts education promotes achievement and is correlated with higher test scores and reduces disciplinary infractions, all the things that we're chasing. In addition, a whole lot of other outcomes, including social emotional outcomes, which are more important today than ever. Um, and most importantly, uh, for those of us who are in these elected positions, it is something that receives tremendous public support. And we need you to continue that tradition here in Tuscaloosa as we move forward. This is why I do what I do. These are some of our all-state musicians here, just the ones I could find to photograph. Um, and just if you need to know, that's the old Central High School band uniform parked on down there. So, as we go, on behalf of the staff who teaches arts and education in the 19 of 21 of our schools, I just want to say thank you for listening and thank you for your support. And I look forward to seeing you at the 50th anniversary of Celebrate the Arts next year. Thank you very much. Have a great night. Congratulations to our students. Dr. Dr. Scholes.
Thank you very much. Good evening, school board. Thank you. Okay, item number six, public comments on non-agenda items. We have one speaker tonight, if Mr. Paul Rollins Jr. would come up, please, sir. Good evening, board. Good evening. Um, that was almost a perfect segue uh, about what I'm up here for this evening. It's a game that adults play, or you may be around your family, you play this game where someone will stand up and give you a couple of words or phrases, and you try and guess what it has in common. So I wrote down a few things. I know, you know, we can't communicate back and forth, but I'm a Throw a few things out there, then at the end, I'll let you know what they have in common. ABC, CBS, and NBC. Law and Order, NCIS, Los Angeles, CSI, New York, This Is Us, Person of Interest, Grey's Anatomy. New York City, Hollywood, Broadway, HBO, Cinemax, Showtime, Netflix, Blair Witch, The Sweet Blood of Jesus, The Knit, Spike Lee, Tom Hanks. What do all these words have in common? Two individuals from my alma mater, the Central High School. has something to do with each one of these words. Networks, from Broadway to Spike Lee movies, Tom Hanks plays. Those two individuals were my classmates. We graduated together. You have Brandon Scott, Stephen Tyrone Williams. They were a part of Central High School's drama department something that right now doesn't exist at Central High School. From my understanding, they haven't had it for about three years. That concerns me. Dr. Schultz just mentioned that fine arts um, increases test scores. Um, it reduces disciplinary infractions. That's something that we need to look at um, I'm pretty sure that drama is offered at Bryan and at Northridge. I don't know why it's not at Central at the moment and why it hasn't been offered in the last three years, but that's something I want to place before the board to look into to see why we don't have it and what we need to do to get it back in place for fall of 21. Um, when I found out they didn't have it, I made a few phone calls. And I sent a few messages out. I, I contacted Stephen and some other individuals that were in the drama department when I was in school. Um, and there's a couple of individuals that are willing to assist with having to get back on track that were in that drama department. Uh, one individual actually taught drama at Shelton, and she's willing to assist with that. So um, I'm not going to be up before you long, but I just wanted to put that at your feet for you to take note and again I would love to see drama back at Central High School for fall of 21. Thank you. Thank you Mr. Rollins. Thank you. Thank you sir. Okay item number seven we go from the arts to Mr. J. Duke to talk about finances. Good evening sir. Informational reports from Mr. J. Duke. Good evening Mr. Chairman. Board members, thank you for the opportunity to bring you these numbers tonight. Tonight we are presenting through the end of January, which was our fourth month of the fiscal year, 33% through the year. Sales tax revenues were uh, slightly down compared to the same month last year. They came in a little late to go on a couple of these reports. but. Uh, they, sales tax was about 1.4 million versus about 1.5 the previous year. Nothing to be alarmed about there. Uh, property tax collections are being collected at a good pace and ahead of last year's pace. 
So that's good. Uh, vehicle tax collections, we'll see here shortly. They were up, and then I'll close tonight with a couple of general fund reports. <clears throat> Sales tax, again, we, we ended up collecting two checks in February, so it's got our numbers kind of um, out of whack as far as comparison. That will adjust itself out in March. But sales tax are on pace, uh, actually ahead of schedule through the end of December. So we feel good about our sales tax and our local economy strength there. Property tax, again, you'll notice in October it started off slow. And then the last three months have had actually ahead of last year's collections as far as timing. So uh, you'll see there at the very bottom. Um, we, we are ahead of schedule as far as collections on property tax, so that's, that's great to see. Our budget again for the year is $26.5 million, and you'll see that we're actually getting close to that amount as we have collected $25.3 million, so that's good. Car tag tax or vehicle tax. That number is good this year, uh, best number for the month of January in about four years. Uh, it's a little smaller than usual just because of the way that comes in and is collected, of course, by the, um, by the beginning letter of your last name. And then it's, of course, staggered a month or two. So um, you'll see that lower number, but comparatively to, to the previous January is a good number. I have a chart here through the end of January, again through four months, which shows the percentage of our local tax collections, which we rely on for a lot of the things that you've seen here tonight as far as the arts. And through the end of four months, because of the time of the year, we're heavy on property tax. With 80% of our local revenues at this point are property tax because the property tax obviously is collected October, November, December, and most of that comes in in December and January. As the year rolls on, property tax will tail off. Sales tax will continue to be hopefully steady about every month, and that will kind of level off. And sales tax and property tax will be in the 40% range each, and then car tag tax relatively is small compared to the other two. But all of those collections seem to be coming in good, so that's great news. Some of that's reflected on the, the next report here. The final report I have here for the night, which is our general fund. I do want to focus on a number that has yet to come along, I know, since I've been here, and that's that six, uh, $6 million increase from the state bond. We were able to, over a course of months, uh, develop a plan where some state bond money we got in the fall of $11 million, we were able to divert that to pay local debt. That's, uh, that happened in January, and I'm glad to share with you that uh, number you see there in the green box, the $6 million increase from the state bond issue that we were able to divert to local funds, basically. That's a great help to our one-month reserve. And I'll now kind of move down to expenses. Um, kind of the same thing that uh, we've seen since COVID closure, we've, we've dropped below um, in a good way, uh, our expense percentages, our target would be 33%. You'll see those categories in the black bracket there, all are below 33%. Again, a lot of that is because of COVID closure. So our overall expense percentage is 30.27. All of that has helped us, and I'll drop down to the bottom number there, it has helped us start building back our one month reserve and get to our two month goal. And I'll pause there for any questions. Okay, Mr. Chairman, that concludes my presentation. Thank you, Mr. Duke. Okay, thank you. Okay, moving along, item eight, introductions of motions, resolutions for a first reading of which there are none takes us to item number nine, the consent agenda. 
We have 9A and 9B. Board may have a motion to approve 9A and 9B. So moved. So a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Those will be approved. Brings us to item 10, regular agenda items for final adoption. 10A, approve the superintendent's recommendation regarding changes in personnel. Good evening, Dr. Cameron. Good evening. Um, before you, you have the superintendent's recommendations regarding changes in personnel. I will go through each one with you. You have three resignations, one new support personnel, one five-day suspension for certified personnel, and one part-time extended day tutor. Okay, board, are there any set-asides for a separate vote and discussion? Okay, board may have a motion to approve. So moved. Motion. We have a second by Mr. Lucas. Any questions or discussion for Dr. Cameron by number only, please? He's moving uh, down to your area, down to Mobile, around that area. It is, yeah. His, um, his father taught with me at University Place. Yeah, so I've, I've known him when he was growing up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Any other questions or discussion? Number three, leaving us. Moving out of state. Yes, sir. Any further questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Those will be approved. Thank you, sir. Item 10B, discuss, approve, revise, substitute compensation. Yes, sir. Um, we're looking to revise the substitute compensation for the period of March 24th through the 28th of uh, May 28th of 2021. We are going to use ESSER funds um, for this uh, revision. And I want to bring your attention to the chart. If you look at the extended certified substitute uh, chart on the far left corner, where it says extended certified substitutes must either work for 20 consecutive days, with this revision, um, they will immediately get the $95 per day. And I will notify Kelly of that change, Kelly Services. Substitution. I'm sorry, board. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Thank you, uh, Reverend Wilson. Um, Dr. Cameron, will, will it revert back um, next calendar year, or are these here to stay? Uh, we'll look at the revision. With the this is in the salary schedule, so when we're revising the salary schedule, we'll, we'll look at it and see where we are at that point. Any other questions for Dr. Cameron? Yeah, yes, sir, Mr. Wilson. On a follow-up with what Mr. Wilson said. So you're saying it is in the future salary schedule for the $95? I'm saying that we'll look at it and to see if we're gonna, so this, this will end May the 28th, 2021. We'll look at the next salary schedule to see if we want to make revision um, with the compensation for substitutes. Okay, and, and just a point of um, declaration, one thing that we know as a system that it's hard to get substitutes and uh, I know that we've been in discussion before about making sure that our substitute teachers have adequate uh, uh, pay. I, I, I've had the opportunity to be a substitute teacher and I can say that in today's time, it's different than when I was a sub. It, it's totally different. And we wanna make sure that um, we're competitive uh, so that we can keep good people around us in the future. Yes, sir, I agree. Can I correct also the advice primarily exactly what you're saying, the competition grows there. So I think right. It's good with what you're saying. Yes, sir. And, and like you said, um, substitutes, we've been down a little bit, so we're hoping this will uh, get some of our substitutes back into our pool. Yes, sir.
we could possibly, we've got uh, the compensation with our, our summer school um, already, but we can look at it and see if we need to adjust. We don't typically use this as our, our substitute compensation for summer learning. They have their own compensation within the salary schedule. Any other questions for Dr. Cameron? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? That will be approved. Thank you, sir. Um, item 10C, discuss approved. Second reading of the revised registrar job description. Yeah, so the only thing I have to say is there's been no revision since our last meeting um, with this job description. Board may have a motion to approve. Motion and a second. Questions? Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? That will be approved. Thank you, Dr. Cameron. Thank you. Does any board member have any unfinished business or updates? General announcements? We do have a called board meeting uh, next Tuesday at 6 o'clock in the Regions Room. The next regular board meeting will be April 6 here. Uh, any other board member have an announcement? Okay, any other announcements? Having none, we'll stand adjourned. Thank you, everyone.